servants all the days. All you got to do is treat them right and talk to them right. But the young folks said, no, put some burdens on them. Make it hard on them. And they're going to serve you for sure. But did he mess up? Yep. What am I telling the young men here, young ladies here? Don't let your peer group outweigh what your parents tell you, nor what you hear from behind this pulpit. Don't let the young people tell you anything different to get you off track because of what they would do. They don't know what to do. They're as young as you are. Hallelujah. They're as ignorant as you are. When I say ignorant, that's not a bad word in this context. But when I say that, I'm talking about they don't have the experience that the elder people have. They haven't been through what the elder people have been through. They haven't seen what the elder people have seen. They haven't had to give up what the elder people have to give up to be where we are today. Hallelujah. And right now, look at Minister Johnson. Look at me. Look at Brother Roland. We're the elders in here right now. What is that telling you? We were all a part of some religious group doing what they had us doing. Brother Johnson was the pastor of a church in, in Georgia. Hallelujah. I was a pastor of church here in Independence. Hallelujah. Brother Roland is still pastoring over there in the Philippine Island, but he's really here with us now. Hallelujah. But we all did something that we are not doing now. Whatever I did before, I'm doing better now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Why? Because I've been converted. Yeah. I'm not the same me that I was. And I'm changing every day. I'm learning every day yeah. what I got to do, how I got to do it, when I got to do it, who I got to do it to and with. It's all in my master's hand. Brothers and sisters, we got a responsibility, number one, to Almighty Yah. And he told us to work out your own salvation. I'm going to be with you, but you got to work it out. So when I told my mom I couldn't be a Baptist no more, she heard me. And she told me, do what the Father tell me to do. And I've been doing it ever since. Hallelujah. See, my mama gave me permission. Nobody else ain't got no business saying nothing to me. <laughs> I'm going to do what my mama told me to do. <laughs> she told me to go with it, son. Go with the Father. He called you, follow what he tell you. Hallelujah. And I've been following him ever since. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Matthew 16, 24. Matthew 16, 24. Then Yahshua said to his taught ones, to his disciples, if anyone wishes to come after me, Brother Johnson, <laughs> if any man coming after me, huh, let him Deny himself. Let him take up his stake. And let him follow me. Now, the Messiah is saying right then, well, let me tell you first of all, when Johanna the Immersion was, back, was immersing people out there in the Jordan River, uh -huh, and he looked up and saw the Messiah coming, and he said, behold, the Lamb of Yah that come and take away the sins of the world. That's what he said, right? And then the, when he got immersed, the heaven, did not the heavens open up? And he said, this is my son in, in whom I'm well pleased. What I want you to do, hear him. I want you to hear him. So whatever you hear is what you follow. Am I right about it? So if you got your ears open, then you're going to follow what you heard him say. So guess what the Messiah was? The Messiah is the roadmap to the kingdom. Because he said, I am also the door to the kingdom. So if he's the road map and he's the door that we enter by, and he said, no man come to the Father but through me, then guess what? We got to follow the Messiah on every step that he took. Because he's our perfect example. That's what Peter said. Brothers and sisters, listen to me now. Listen to me closely. There is no other way to get to the kingdom except the leadership of Yahshua, the Messiah. Not Paul. Because Paul said, follow me as I follow the Messiah. Not Peter. Not James. We have to follow the Messiah. Come on, somebody. See, and then we're going to follow the Messiah 
Then we look in the book of Luke chapter 4. The Messiah went in the synagogue on a Sabbath as his custom was. That's what the Messiah did. So guess what we have to do? Keep the Sabbath. The Messiah celebrated the feast days. So guess what we have to do? Celebrate the feast days. The Messiah said, Father, I have kept your commandments. So guess what we have to do? Keep the commandments. See, when you start looking at what he did, how he entreated people, he talked to Jew and Gentile alike. He said, it must need be that I go to Samaria, where y'all Jews don't want to go. And y'all got people coming out of Samaria, shaking the dust of Samaria off their feet before they put their feet on Jerusalem soil. I got to go to Samaria, he said. And he went over there, and he talked to a female. Am I right about it? See, I want, I want you to understand that whatever they were saying couldn't be done, he was showing them, if you're going to follow me, this what must be done. Hallelujah. But they're not following the Messiah. How can you say you're following him and you're not doing what he told you to do and still expect to get to the same destination? It's not going to happen. The Messiah kept the Sabbath. You can't keep Sunday because you're breaking the fourth commandment. The Messiah kept these days. You can't keep holidays because you're breaking the second commandment. You're actually bowing down to false deities and worshiping them. Are y'all hearing me? See, we got to be able to understand. Out of your father and your mother, did we say Almighty Yah is our father and our mother? Well, we got to honor him so that our days be long. <laughs> Bless his Kodesh name. See, we got to understand. All those commandments refer right back to Almighty Yah and us. The first four teach us how to keep Yah happy, and the last six teach us how to keep each other happy. Or should I say, the first four teach us how to love Yah, and the last six teach us how to love one another. How can you throw them away? And the same people, listen to me, y'all, the same people who say, oh, you shouldn't go out there and commit adultery. That's a sin. Oh, you going to keep that one? I thought you threw them away. I thought we didn't need them anymore. And the man go out there and say, oh, you stealing? Oh, that's a sin. You're going to hell. Oh, you keep that one too? Well, from my viewpoint, you keep all of them except one. And that's the one that's assigned between Yah and his people forever. That's the one you said is for the Jews. But when the Sabbath was made in the book of Genesis, it wasn't no Jew. Hallelujah. He created the Sabbath. He sanctified it. Back then, before it was codified as a Ten Commandment law. Hallelujah. What am I saying? What I'm saying is, we need to follow the plan. The plan is with Yahshua. If he did it, we got to do it. Paul did it. Peter did it. James did it. All of them did it. They all followed Yahshua. Everywhere they went, they preached Yahshua. Everything they taught was Yahshua. What about us? That's exactly what we're doing. There's no sense in saying you're going to the kingdom that is not your destination if you're not following the Messiah. Because you don't know where you're going to end up at if you're not following the Messiah. Because you're just following your leader. And I read in this book that it said if the blind lead the blind, they both will fall into a ditch. And I ain't looking for no ditch. I'm looking for the kingdom. Over there in John 14, 6. John 14, 6. He said to them, I am the way. Is that clear enough for us? If you're looking for the way, he said, I'm the way. I'm the plan, I'm the map to get you to your destination. Guess what? I'm not going to lie to you. Why? Because I am the truth. Everything else is a lie. Oh, brother, that's not politically correct. It is for me. Because if it's not the truth, it's a lie. Is that right? All right, so he said he is the truth. Then he said, I am the life. That means all and everything that's about him appertain to life. So anything that does not appertain to him and his way and his truth appertains to death. That's not my word. That's what's written in this book, right? 
I'm not adding to it. I'm not taking away from it. I'm keeping it in context of which it was written. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So if you follow anything else, you're going away from the truth, you're getting lost, and you're in death. Then you go to John 14, 2. In my father's house are many rooms. And if not, I would have told you. But I'm going to prepare a place for you. For if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. In my father's room. In my father's house. Now look what he said. I'm going to prepare a place for you. So what was his destination? His destination was to get to the kingdom and prepare a place for us. Come on, y'all. Come on. He went to the kingdom to prepare a place for me. <laughs> Take it personally. He went to the kingdom, I'm going to say it again, to prepare a place for me. Hallelujah. Now he said, I'm going to come back. Now his new destination is earth. Come on, y'all. His new destination is earth. And why is he coming back to this place? To get me. And take me, who must be prepared, to a prepared place. The last message I preached, Brother Johnson, last week was preparation, preparation, preparation. We must be prepared. Because if we don't prepare ourselves, we're not going back with him. We remember the five foolish virgins who were not prepared. The gate was closed and they were left. But those who had their lights and had them trimmed, they went back with him. I want to go back with him. That's my destination, baby. You know, a long time ago, me and my sister right there and my brother Basil, we used to be standing at the bus stop waiting for the whole tar to take us to our destination on Canal Street. From Narco to Canal Street. We had to stay there and cross to it. Don't, worry, don't forget about that one. We were, stay, we were standing right there. Now, we were standing there, and the bus was supposed to come get us. But sometimes the bus would be a little late, and we would get a little antsy. Mom, is it coming yet? Boy, be quiet, it's coming. But we ain't, we, ain't, we got so anticipatory now, we, we can't stop asking, is the bus coming? Now, we, we ought to have sense that mama don't know where the bus at either. <laughs> but we bugging her, getting on her nerve. But when we saw the bus, whoo, boy, we got excited. Hot, hard bus, even though we have to sit in the back. Hot, hard bus. We was glad to sit in the back. Felt that little air conditioning on us. <laughs> Took us all the way to New Orleans. Dropped us off at Krauss. That was the first restaurant I ate at BLT. That thing tasted so good. Every time we went to New Orleans, I wanted one of them. I don't eat that no more. <laughs> all I'm saying is, when, when that bus came to take us to the final destination, which was Krauss, I got excited. Letha got excited. Mama got Everybody was excited. But you know what? That wasn't our final destination. He's coming back to get us. He's going to be on the clouds of the air, riding on a white horse with the armies of heaven behind him. The last trumpet going to sound. 